National Championship pick for Raymond James Stadium January 9th for the whole marbles. I think Clemson gets revenge this time. I think uh, Deshaun Watson, who played well in last year's game, I think this time he comes out of this game with the W. And for Dabo Sweeney, who, of course, played for the Tide, now he will have a win over the Tide in the National Championship game. The Tigers in quest for another championship, but now they enter a season knowing that the bullseye is squarely on their back, knowing that every team that they play will have the mentality of, we're about to face the defending national champion. So Clemson has to be ready. Now, let's go ahead and talk about the Tigers' offense first because, um, yes, this was an offense last year that was a lack of fine. 39 points per game, which was number three, by the way, in the ACC. It was a pretty high-scoring league. Uh, what they have coming back, almost all their offensive line. That will include um, a couple of guys who, once again, should be all ACC, avoiding injury, of course. We're talking about Mitch Hyatt. Um, who's been a starter from year number one and is a two-time All-ACC player at the left tackle spot. Right guard, Tyrone Crowder, also an All-ACC selection as well, entering his final year as a redshirt senior. Also, two other starters come back for Clemson. Uh, Sean Pollard at right tackle, saw playing time as a freshman. And then left guard, you've got Taylor Hearn, a redshirt junior. Now, you got to fill a very big gap. Jay Glermo's no longer there, and they're going to miss him. So Justin Falchinelli must be able to step in and get the job done. He is a redshirt junior, and he'll play the center spot. In terms of quarterback, Deshaun Watson wasn't just the best QB in college football last year. He was the best QB Clemson ever had. Um, in addition to throwing for well over 4,000 yards, he also, too, was the team's second leading rusher. So we now enter a dual quarterback for the Tigers in the form of Kelly Bryant, who's from South Carolina and a guy that has only played 10 games in his career, including just four last year. But like I say, he's a dual threat quarterback, and Clemson will rely on him. Hunter Johnson, a true freshman, looks like will be the backup. He was an early enrollee this past spring. The running game, well, you're going to miss Wayne Gallman. Gallman was a speedy but very um, elusive type running back who gained over 1,100 yards last year on that quest to a national championship. And you replace him with a couple of guys who've played a little bit, but playing experience is pale in comparison to that of Gallman. That's C.J. Fuller, a redshirt junior, and uh, Tavian Feaster. Both running backs had a little over 200 yards a year ago. Feaster averaged a little bit more as far as yards per carry. Receivers, well, yeah, Mike Williams. Boy, was he a good one for the Tigers. Now, we're talking about a guy with about 1,200 yards in receiving and almost 100 catches, and you also lose Artavis Scott. So the Tigers lose three of their top four receivers from a year ago, but I think this is an area where they'll still be pretty productive because they've got guys coming up who did play last year, and Deion Kane played quite a bit and had 19 yards per catch and a whopping nine touchdowns. Also, Ray Ray McLeod, a uh, junior, you have him back too. He had 49 catches a year ago for a pair of scores. And don't forget about Hunter Rimfro from the slot. He had 44 catches, six touchdowns, including the game-winning score against Bama in the national championship game. But another loss you have to concern yourself with if you're the Tigers is tied in. Jordan Leggett was one of the best in the country. So now Milan Richard will try to fill in his shoes, a junior. The Tigers were tops in the ACC in passing last year, 333 yards per game and seventh in the country. The team, by the way, 503 yards last year per game as far as total yardage. Um, Clemson will still be pretty good, okay? I'm not saying that they're going to go in the tank, but it wouldn't be a surprise if there was just a bit of a drop-off because, remember, you lose Leggett, you lose Scott, you lose Williams, you lose Gallman, you lose Watson. You lose big-time production as far as playmakers. That's hard for any program, even one of Clemson's height, to try to replace. But again, that experience on the offensive line won't hurt. Uh, if you're looking at the defensive side, um, Brent Venables, again, another fine D, in spite of the fact that, you know, in years past they've had a lot of players to replace, including last year they had to replace seven starters. They were still eighth in the country in total D. Entering this year, didn't have to worry about replacing as many starters. He's got seven coming back. Defensive line, I think, is where they're going to be the strongest, including probably the best tackle tandem in all of college football, Dexter Lawrence. He met all the hype, 6'5", 340 pounds last year as a freshman, 78 tackles, 
seven sacks. Very, very difficult guy to block. And the guy next to him at tackle, he's no slouch either. Talking about Christian Wilkins, a, a junior with 56 tackles. At one defensive end, Clellan Farrell, a sophomore last year as a freshman, had 44 tackles. And Austin Bryant, um, limited playing time last year, but at least he did get involved at 13 tackles a year ago. Again, defensive lines are going to be terrific. Linebacker, Ben Bulwer, probably their biggest loss on the defensive side of the ball. Um, had over 130 tackles, led the team. So that's a notable omission. But you have Kendall Joseph Jr., who Venables will probably move to the uh, weak side linebacking spot. 81 solo tackles a year ago, 124 total. And you have Trey Lamar, um, who played as a freshman, now as a sophomore, most likely will play at the middle linebacker. And at the strong side linebacker, you have Dorian O'Daniel, a, a senior who had 60 stops a year ago. Now, if there is one area that really bears attention watching, if you're a Tiger defensive fan, will be the secondary because you lost a couple of diamonds in this capacity. Talking about Kadre Tankersley, who had four picks a year ago, and Jadar Johnson, who led the team with five interceptions. So you lose a valuable corner as well as a safety, but you do have Van Smith back at strong safety. 65 solo tackles in 2016, including a pair of picks, and joining him, Tanner Muse, a redshirt sophomore. At the corners, Ryan Carter looks like will occupy one spot. He could also play at the nickelback spot. And Trayvon Mullen, who saw playing time as a freshman, now you'll have him as a sophomore entering this season. The Tiger defense, again, was so productive. And, again, I think it's going to be that defensive line that really shines for this team, and that should aid the defensive backfield a bit. And it's got to because in September they've got five games, and three of them are going to be very difficult ones, which we'll break down later on in the Clemson schedule. Special teams, uh, Greg Hugel is back, 14 of 19 last year on place kicking. The punting, though, you have a new punter now in Will Spears, and we'll see if he can do better than what Clemson did last year in punting, which was only 38 yards per boot. And it looks like Feaster as well as McLeod will be the kick returners for the Tigers. Looking at the Tigers' schedule, if Clemson plans on remaining a national championship threat, then they cannot have just an okay September. It's got to be spectacular because there's at least three games that spell trouble. The second one, Auburn. Last year, Clemson just got by Auburn on the road, but at least this time they get them at home. That won't be the case the following week in the ACC opener at Louisville against last year's Heisman Trophy winner, Lamar Jackson. Two weeks later, one of the better teams from the Coastal, and you got to play them on the road, Virginia Tech, to close out September. Like I said, that opening month will not be easy. October eases up a little bit. Before the Florida State game, Clemson has to watch out because NC State, that could be a trap game. It's on the road this time. Last year at home, Clemson needed overtime to beat the Wolfpack. And, of course, all eyes on November 11th, one of the biggest games of the year in college football, the Seminoles and the Tigers from Clemson. Florida State, by almost everybody, will be the preseason favorite because they return so many players on both sides of the ball. And the Tigers close out the year with their interstate rival, the Gamecocks. The Vegas win total has Clemson at 9.5. That's pretty good. I think the Tigers will just exceed that at 10 wins. I think big part because of good coaching and because of how much experience their offensive and defensive lines will have. They'll keep them in every game that they play in. However, they lost too many playmakers, especially Deshaun Watson, off last year's squad. And that means that, in my opinion, we'll have a new champion this year in college football. I think Clemson falls just short of getting back to the playoff and falling short of winning another ACC championship. But I do think the Tigers will go to a major bowl game. That's my look at Clemson. See you next time.